Hey, 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 we're back, we're black, we're brown ambition, 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 brown ambition. Ambition, ambition, ambition. I'm feeling spicy today. I still got some curls left over. Some of y'all may have synced me um, on the interwebs. I told you that um, I took out my, um, what are those things called? Pipe cleaners. Um, and the curls is popping. And they still, you know, it's, it's not it's not popping, popping like Mandy popping, but they still got a, lot, a little life left in them. Um, Mandy's not here today, but she should be back soon. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, I don't know, man, who shared on social that her father was in the hospital. That's why she's been away. So I feel comfortable sharing that, but he seems to be on the mend. So she should be back soon. So we're going to send our prayers to her and the fam. Um, so you just have me, child. Um, I'm just gonna give you a little update. And then I had a word on today that I think would be really helpful for your pocketbook. Um, <laughs> so Little update last week, I told you that I tell you I was doing Meta. So, Meta had International Women's Day, which I think officially the day is the eighth, but they had a breakfast and they invited your girl to come and speak, which was really awesome. And it just went really well. It was, uh, I mean, I'm trying to think like it was all these VPs at Meta, all these, like, you know, think about the, some of the most powerful, 150 of most powerful women, like in the, in the world, like coming together for breakfast. Um, and it just was just a beautiful event. I ended up sitting next to Garcelle Bouvier. I think that's how you say her last name. Remember Garcelle fancy. Some of the, some of y'all too young to remember the Jamie Foxx show back in the day. Garcelle was on the show called, um, Jamie Foxx and, um, and her name was fancy. Um, but you know, now she's on real housewives. I think of Beverly Hills. Um, and she's done a bunch of other stuff, produces, Axe, philanthropist, business owner, just an all around Wonder Woman. And about three years ago, when my book, um, Get Care With Money, came out, I had sent it to the ladies on The Real, which she was um, a, a host on The Real at the time. And um, I was also on The Real. I used to be on The Real all the time when it was, you know, here before it got um, canceled. And um, she posted my book on Twitter. And I was like, oh my gosh, girls, I'll post my book. Am. So when I ended up sitting next to her at this event, because she was also speaking too, I didn't think she remembered me because girl, you know, people be seeing, you know, I didn't meet her in person. I mean, we were like, you know, at that time it was pandemic. So we were Zoom, you know, the reels like for other women. So I just didn't think she remembered me. So when I sat next to her, you know, she smiled, said hello. And I said, hi. I said, you probably don't remember me, but a few years ago, you shared my book on Twitter, and I just want to thank you in person. She looked at me and she said, Tiffany, stop. <laughs> I was like, not fancy knowing me. She was like, girl, of course I know you. I love your work. I love what you do. You know, I think you're amazing. Well, I don't know if she said all that, but that was basically what she had meant. <laughs> and she um, she just was so nice. And I asked her to take a picture, and she did. So if you have not seen my pictures from Meta, they're all over the Bajanista IG. It was just a good time, a good time, honey. And so I just, it was just one of those occasions where your work speaks for itself. And that's what I want to talk to you about today. Mandy's not in here, so we're going to be acting up, honey. You know, I like me a little word. This morning I was talking to one of my mentees and Oh, I got to hit Martin back, child. That's one of my other mentees. Um, and so he was sharing. So he's got a daughter and um, he was, is coaching her softball team. And he said, kids have this, this thought that they can go light in practice and they'll save it for the big game. Right. And he's been trying to teach them through sports that the way you practice is the way you play. Oh, that's a word. You might, we're going to call it that. That's what we're going to call the, the title of this episode. The way you practice is the way you play. Right. And so he's been trying to teach like the girls on the team that, that you're not going to be your best when you play. You think you are like, you know, like you ever see like, you know, people are like, uh, they do like, a um, they're practicing for a play an actual play. 
And, you know, they're like, oh, I'm going to save the big number, the big note, you know, my full voice for the play. No, you won't, because the way you practice is the way you're going to show up for the play. Anybody who's ever been in any kind of production knows that at some point they do at least one full dress rehearsal run through. They put on like the clothes, the makeup, everything, lights, everything's exactly how it would be the night the play is going to open because they need to see all that's going to be required for like to make sure that the actual play is going to be successful. And the truth of the matter is that your brain creates connections in the practice that those are the connections that are going to show up when it's showtime, baby. And why is that a lesson on today? That is a lesson because some of you are struggling during showtime because when it's practice time, you're not fully doing the work. What do I mean? So you tell yourself, man, if I were to get, you know, a hundred thousand dollars, make a hundred thousand dollars, this is how I would navigate. Well, you currently make 50. How are you navigating with 50? I wait. Uh You're reckless with the 50, right? And so if you think that having more money is going to make you more responsible or smarter with your money, it's not. Why? Because the way you practice is the way you what? Play. Say it out loud. I I see you on the train, sis. I see you in the car, nodding your head. Mm -hmm. I see you washing dishes. I see you ironing, folding clothes. I see you right on the Peloton or the bike or the treadmill as you listen to this. The way you practice is the way you what? Put your finger in the air. Play. Okay. And so if you want to be able to manage a lot of money well, when you have a little, are you setting aside for savings? Are you looking to see what investing might look like? Are you um, living under your means, under, you know, uh, living beneath your means with the money that you currently have? I know that's not always easy, but the way you practice, the way you play, that more money doesn't make you smarter with money. You just become more of yourself. If you are, like for me, everybody knows me. I've always been pretty thrifty. And so I was thrifty with the little, thrifty with medium. I'm still thrifty, relatively thrifty with a lot, but thrifty just looks different. You know, like thrifty with a little was like, okay, I didn't spend money on things that I didn't need because that's all I could afford. Thrifty with, with medium meant that like, okay, with a little bit of excess, I still saved a little, invested a little and still spent under my means. Now that I have a lot, I'm still relatively thrifty in that, I still live under 30, I live under like 30, sometimes even 10% of what I make. So although it's a lot of money, 10% of what I make, it's still significantly less than what I could spend. And so, because the way I practice is the way I'm currently playing. That's just how it goes. I thought to myself, so like, for example, when I did the, um, the meta, when I I knew that I was going to get an opportunity to self-introduce myself. So sometimes they'll read your bio And sometimes they'll say, you know, tell, you know, tell the audience about yourself. So that morning I said, let me practice. And because I have before, because I've done so many speaking engagements, there have been times when I've said to myself, I don't really need to practice because I already know, girl, I do this ton of times. And every time I do that, I always end up forgetting something or I could have done a better job. But I said, not at Meta, not in this room with the most powerful 150 women like in this room, right? And so I said, what is it before I left, before I got, they they sent a car for me, all that before the makeup lady came, before everything. I told my, I asked myself, I said, what do you want this room of 150 women to know and do when it comes to you? I said, one, many of them may not know anything about my work. I want them to know that I serve women, especially black and brown women when it comes to personal finance. I want them to know in the ways that I've served them and what accolades I've already accumulated so they can say, wow, this is a legitimate person. Obviously one, she's here at Meta, but I did not know the scope of the work that she's done. So that was one. I said, I want them to know that about me. And then two, I want to position myself to partner with some of these women in the room to give them ideas about what partnership could look like with me. That was two. No more than three things. That's what I always think when I'm speaking. But those are my two things. And so I practice my speech. I said, okay, Tiffany, if you're like, oh, hey, my name is Tiffany. What are the things you want them to know about you? So if I had not practiced, I would have been like, oh, I would have been running on and on and on. Oh, my name is Tiffany. I teach financial education. I help women and blah, 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 blah. Because on Monday, so the thing was on Wednesday. 
um, the meta um, breakfast. On Monday, we had done a run through with um, the organizers of the event. And so they did that. They said, oh, Tiffany, you know, do a quick two, three minute spiel about yourself. And I just went on and on and on. And I realized that's, I don't want to do it all on stage. No, no. What did I want to know? I said, I want them to know numbers. I want them to be like, okay, she's fun and lighthearted, easy to work with. So I always start with, hey, hey, hey. And everybody laughed. I was like, hey, hey, hey. It's, I love to start with that. My name is Tiffany Aliche, AKA The Budget Nista. And I teach financial education to women, especially to women of color, most specifically to black women for the last 15 years, number number one. I have been able to serve nearly 3 million women, number number two, number, yeah, number two, on their financial journey through my online school, boom, shit out online school, um, through my New York Times bestseller, bestselling book, shit out New York Times bestseller. Um, and uh, I forget what I said, online school, New York Times bestseller book, my award-winning podcast. Okay, boom, Brown Ambition. Um, and what else did I say? I said, I wanted them to know that. And I also said, um, uh, it's my mission to help as many women because I want them to know my mission to see if they want to help on that mission, get and stay on financial track. I said, uh, four years ago this month, which is February at the time, I um, worked with Assemblywoman Angela B. McKnight in my state of New Jersey to get the budget needs to law passed, law A1414, making financial education mandatory for all middle school students in the state of New Jersey. Boom. They were like, what? They started to clap. So there was like four or five different things that I wanted to infuse into my bio when I, when I introduced myself. It was like a minute and a half, two minute most. But it was like, okay, I set the stage. But that wasn't it. That was just the bio. They gave us the questions ahead of time. And I was like, okay, when are you going to infuse things into these questions? So I know, for example, I want to start to get um, sponsorships for my online school, um, the Literature Academy. And so one of the things, I forget one of the questions, but I infused into that question because I had practiced it. I, I have already graduated 150,000 women since my school opened eight years ago. And as a result, I can share that what I've learned about from those women is that this is what women want. Because the question was like something about like, you know, what are some of the financial challenges or whatever, something like that that women face. But do you see how I infused like I you graduated 150,000 women from your school? What's going on here? Because I practiced it. So when it was time to play, when it was showtime, I was ready and so my sister, uh, Tracy, my publicist was with me. She was like, wow, the way you were dropping numbers. I mean, I was getting applause, 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 but that does not happen when I don't practice. I don't always practice and I always regret it when I don't. I remember one time I did like a news show. I can't remember. It was Pix 11 or whatever. And I was just so tired. I didn't get a chance to practice and it showed. And I told my sister, I didn't get a chance to practice. She said, I know. She said, it wasn't bad, but I know you when you practice, you know? And so you have to ask yourself, if you are in a position where Things are not going the way you want them to go. If like your business or your money or your career, what does practice look like? Because here's the thing. The tree is going to bear the fruit, honey. Like, so one of my, when my mentees come to me and they hit me with the yang, 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 yang about why it's not working out, why it's not working out, da, da, da. I'm like, let show me the fruit. Show me the fruit, meaning the results. If these are your results, it is a direct indicator of the tree. The tree is you, the work. So if your fruit is not fruitful, that means your tree is not doing what it needs to do. That means you're not doing what you need to do. I'm not saying you're not working hard, but working hard is not the same as doing what you need to do, right? So sometimes you think to yourself, like, I'm at the gym every day. I'm doing all this cardio, but you're not lifting weights, sis. Well, you know what? Cardio is great for your heart and your lungs, but you want the, you want your shoulders looking like Michelle Obama. It's not going to happen, sis. Not on the treadmill. So you working hard. You want the, you on the treadmill three hours a day and you think you're going to cut your arms up? How? Make it make sense. Make it make sense. It won't. You know, like you say you want to lose weight and you're always in the gym, but guess what? 90% of that weight, sis, is the kitchen. What you eating? Mm -hmm. That's how you practicing. Like you ever, if you have a trainer, your trainer can tell like that, that, you know, you haven't been doing anything in between or you've been overeating or whatever it is. Right. Because the way you practice is the way you play. 
And so if your tree tree is not bearing the fruit that you're wanting it to bear, you have to ask yourself, what am I doing at the tree level? Because at the end of the day, you know, because some people will just say, oh, well, you know, like I am doing what I'm supposed to do. It's just not, but that's not true. An orange tree is never going to bear apples. So you could certainly bring, blame the fruit and then never succeed. Or you can look in the mirror and say, what do I need to do differently? How do I need to show up differently day to day? So when it is showtime, I get to show out. Right? Some people are begging for the opportunity, but the opportunity is not going to come because you refuse to do the behind the scenes work. You want to be on Good Morning America, but you haven't practiced. Are, are you doing media training? What are you going to wear? Do you have a makeup artist ready? What, what will your hair look like? You know, do you know how to speak in sound bites? That one of the ladies came up to me after the meta thing. She's like, girl, all your little sound bites. That was amazing. Cause I, I watched a podcast or read a book some years ago about when you do media and press, how you have to learn how to like, you know, like how I just said, the way you practice is the way you play. Y'all have heard me say, need it, love it, like it, want it. Those are your spending priorities. Those are sound bites. Those are little clips that people can clip and take home with them or put on social media or put on TV or whatever. I learn to speak in sound bites for when I do media and press. And you can't answer a question in 10 minutes on the Today Show. How can you people raise their credit? How can people start to budget? Well, um, Robin Roberts, they can split it before they get it. <laughs> and Robin said, that's interesting. What does that mean? Split it before you get it. It's a sound bite. Well, you're going to go to payroll and say, can you split my check before you get, before I get my check? Okay. Then how does that work? Here are the four, uh, four bank accounts, your bills, checking account, your, your, um, spending checking account, your long-term savings account for emergencies. And then, um, your saving, well, your savings for emergencies and your savings for long-term savings. Those are your four, um, um, bank accounts, uh, Robin Roberts. And she's like, okay, but do you see like, but that takes practice because the what you don't want actually is to have to do the play without the practice because you might not never get another opportunity to go back out again. You go on a Good Morning America and you, uh, 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 they're like, she can't come back. This is why, quite honestly, like you see people like in January, Good Morning America wanted me to come on three times. I'm like, is there anybody else? But you want to know why? Because they don't have the time for you to practice live. They don't have the time for you to practice live. They're like, who has been on? Who have we seen on TV? Who delivers Tiffany? And so for me, if you're like, well, how do I practice for something like that? For me, one of the best ways to, I, I started to practice was going live. I used to go live on social media all the time just to practice. I would practice a segment for TV on live and I just wouldn't save it with y'all. I would practice a speech where I'm like, okay, I'm doing a keynote. I remember one time I'm like, I'm doing a keynote in a couple of days. I'm gonna practice with y'all. And I would just, I just do the keynote to work out some stuff to see like in the comments, where do you, where, where are you guys LOLing? Where are you guys say, oh, that's a good one. Mm-hmm. And it got me comfortable in front of the camera. It got me comfortable speaking. Also, I get to listen to my cadence. I tend to speak really fast naturally. And so I have to learn to slow down for TV and I can be a little faster in, in when I'm in person. But do you see, like, the way I was practicing was I used to go live de- darn near every day. Darn near every day. Sometimes for hours I would be live. And they'd be like, Tiffany is bugging. I'm like, no, I have a $100,000 keynote that I'm doing in two days. So y'all going to get this on the live so I know I'm ready so I can collect my coin in two days. <laughs> you know? And so I just want you to rem- remind you of that. That if the fruit that you are currently bearing is not what you're wanting, is not quite as healthy, is not quite as um, as fruitful, is not quite as abundant, then you have to ask yourself, what is the tree doing? What are you doing? You have to shift it at the tree level, which is you. It's like the bad news is, sis, is you. But the good news is, sis, it's you, honey. That means you could change it at any time. Because the way you practice is what? The way you play, the way you navigate your money, the way you show up at work, the way you show up in your business, in all areas, the way you show up in your relationship. You know, you ever see the couples that go out, like it's awkward to go out to dinner with them because they be all tight with each other. It's obvious. I'm like, y'all stay fighting at home. I could tell because they had dinner like, Charles, what's a tight lip? Could you pass me the spaghetti? And Charles is like, you're always asking for the spaghetti. And you're like, what the hell is going on here? 
they think they fooling somebody. I'm like, <laughs> y'all be fighting all the time at home, don't you? Why? Because the way you practice at home is the way you play outside at dinner with your friends. Get it together at home. You could tell. You could tell the couples that are like, oh, having a good time, loving and laughing at home because in public, they loving and laughing in public because you can't hide it, sis. The fruit that you're bearing is an indicator of the tree, you know? So if you want a good relationship, are you putting in the effort? I was just talking to a friend of mine the other day. Her friend just got engaged. And some men made me ask her, I was like, how is she and her fiance? She said, what makes you ask? I said, I don't know. I just get this underlying current that, hmm, it's a little not so great. And she said, well, your current is right. Like, you know, they're having a hard time. And one of the reasons why, to me, people have a hard time in relationships is that folks don't understand that relationships take work. That's the practice. Now, here's the thing. People hear the word word work and they think that I mean that it feels um, heavy and, oh boy, I got to work to make sure this food is... No, 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 no. And maybe the word work is too heavy of a word and the word I should use is effort because... Effort can be delightful as can work. So when Jarrell was still here, I would practice figuring out ways to put a smile on his face. That's work. That's joyful effort work, right? So like, okay, I know how much he likes. German chocolate cake was like his favorite at one point um, cake. So I knew for like, and that's not an easy cake to find. So I knew for his birthday that I was going to surprise and get that for him. And Jarrell really loved lasagna and he loved what I make it. Y'all know I don't cook. I mean, I can cook. I just don't like to cook particularly. I don't hate it, but it's, it's just, your girl's busy. But certain times I would be like, okay, I'm going to go this weekend to the supermarket and get all the fixings and I'm going to surprise him and make him a lasagna. Not for his birthday, not for any, any other reason, but just because. And I knew it was going to put a smile on his face. Or, you know, the next time he drives his car, I will have filled it up. Or like, I'm going to put like, um, I remember I bought these sticky notes that had hearts on them. And one weekend I like wrote all these really beautiful, like, um, messages to him and put it all around the notes, like in his sock drawer and the underwear drawer here, places I know he would open. And there was like a delight. It was like months later, we were still finding sticky notes, you know, and he would do the same thing, those types of things for me. And that's why I started to do them because he was really romantic like that. Like I remember one anniversary, I was like, I think I probably told the story, but I, um, Jarrell knows that like child, if there's one thing that you can set your clock to, Tiffany gonna wake up in the middle of the night to go pee. <laughs> Cause this bladder is not letting me sleep through the night, not on today or tomorrow. And so I, um, I woke up middle of the night, you know, the, the day before our anniversary or the night, I guess, of uh, whatever our anniversary and I'm headed to the bathroom. I'm like, what is that noise? I hear music playing. I'm like, is there, is there somebody in the bathroom? Child, this man had put his phone on repeat, that Tony, Tony, Tony song. Do you know what today is? It's our anniversary. Mm. Our anniversary. He had that. He waited for me to go to sleep, set up his phone in the bathroom, playing that music, had rose petals all over the daggone bathroom, and... It was like a candle burning, which I was like, child, he's trying to burn us down. <laughs> a candle burning, but, she, but also this beautiful necklace that he bought me. And it was something else, I think perfume, because he always bought me like the best perfume. And I just remember being like, the effort, because I'm like a late sleeper. So to, and he had always has to get up early. He always had to get up early in the morning to wait for me to fall asleep. I don't even know where those flowers were, maybe in the car and where all these other things were hidden to wait for me to fall asleep, to set it up, knowing Tiffany's going to go to the bathroom and have to be in the middle of the night and she's going to wake up and see that. And it was just so beautiful. And he taught me the effort in the big things and the small things. And, and as a result of us always working on our relationship, it reflected when it was showtime outside in the streets. People would tell us like, oh my God, I could just tell you guys love each other so much. Wasn't, we didn't have to put on, you know, during the showtime. Because it was like, we got to play the way we practice. This is how we are at home. And so when you see us out and about, this is how we are out and about too. So in every area of your life, you know, you want, you want a good relationship with your sister. Do you call her weekly? Do you? You want a good relationship with your parents? Do you go see them? 
with your nieces and your nephews? Are you expecting your 15 year old niece to be the one to reach out to you? Mm. Right. Are you practicing the way you want to play? Because that's what it's going to take. It's not going to magically happen. Like, yes, it's work, but work can be joyful. You know, work can be delightful. I delighted in and still with my the people that I love, figuring out ways to make them happy. I delight in that. You know, like <laughs> Jerome used to like, like leave a note on my car, you know, and I'd be like, who the hell put a thing on my car? And it would just be him. Like saying, I love you. I'm stalking you. <laughs> that was his favorite thing to say. He would write a note be like, turn around. I'm like, this dude. <laughs> you know? And so I just say all that to say that like, that is the lesson in the word for today. Whether it comes to your money, your career, your relationships, your business, whatever, your job, whatever, whatever it is that you're wanting, that, you know, though you can have those things, but it takes effort, consistency, because you really do get to play the way you practice, okay? And so, yeah, so I just hope that's a good word on today. We're going to take a quick break, and then we're going to come back with brown break, brown boost, okay? Um, we're going to pay some bills. And we're back in black and brown. It's time. Oh, damn, I always forget. No, that's like the B-A-Q-A. Damn it. How does the brown break, bro? I don't know why I keep forgetting. Um, are you Are you going to break? It's time. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why, yo. My memory. Imani had to step in. And now it's time to boost up, break up, boost up, break up, boost up, break. Mm. Are you going to break? Are you going to boost? Meanwhile, I did backwards. What you going to do? What you going to take? Um, you know, I'm in a good mood, so I don't even know if I want to really break like that. Although I will say, I don't know, child. Um, the I guess if I was going to break from anything, I'm going to boost because something good's gonna, good is coming. But if I was going to break from anything, you know, I'm going to break from this is like not so much financial as it is like just like like life wise. But why is it like when did it what? Is it me or it seems like there's this whole men hate women, women hate men thing. It's not just in like the black girl space. I've seen it like all over. What's happening? I feel like I've been out of the loop, but I'm like, you know, the whole, um, remember Kevin Samuelson, but like that was kind of probably at his peak, but like all the podcasts and all the, I don't remember that always being the case. Has that always been the case? Women against men. Anyway, I want to break from that because this whole ain't no good man, ain't no good women. La, 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 la. Yeah, 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 yeah. One, that's not true. And two, why would you want that to be true? I, I, you have to be so careful about the words that come out of your mouth. All men lie, all men cheat. That's not true. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You know, or um, women only want you for whatever. That's not true. That's not true because I, not only did I live it, I can look around my neighbors across the street. They're in a loving relationship. Of course, you don't know everybody's business. I think about my designer, Rihanna, her husband, Jermaine, they're like amazing. I think about Terrell, Jarrell's brother. He is an awesome partner to, to his, um, long-term girlfriend. Um, I think about, um, oh, who was it? They were, oh, I think about like my friend Shanta and Dennis, like that's such a loving relationship. I think about my friend Sahai and her husband. Um, they have such a loving relationship. I mean, certainly of course there are a lot of examples of unhealthy relationships, but I just say all that to say that something someone told me once, it's like, why would you want to win at a losing game? Meaning like, oh, it is true. All men are, okay, sis, congratulations. You win. You win. You win. Everybody's terrible. Yay. Why? I don't want to win that game. Mm -mm, keep that over there. So you get to win that the truth is every man is terrible. And then other people get to win that they don't believe it. So they have the partnership they desire. So like, why would you want to argue for your own limitations and win? Cause you're going to win every time you are. And I know I have, it's not like, Oh, well that's so you're so lucky. Cause you got lucky with Jarrell. You think I have some terrible ass relationships, girl. Of course I did. I'm 44. You know, me and Jarrell didn't get married till I was 37. Child, I was in the muck. Okay. I have plenty of foolishness when it comes to dating plenty, you know, and yet, and still there was a Jarrell, you know what I mean? And so I just say all that to say that like, 
that's my brown break, but I'm going to boost. But that's my brown break that like speaking life into the life that you want. Stop arguing for your own limitations and then being mad when you win because you're going to win every time. I don't want to win at ain't enough money. I'll never make that. I can't have that. I can't live that. I'm always going to be broke. I'm not trying to win that game because if you say those things, you're going to win. And then you get to win at a losing game and we want better for you. Okay. So we dropping all that negative talk. That's the brand break. But the boost is your girls going back to the white house, the white house, the white house. Okay. Yes. Black girl in the white house. Hey, black girl in the white house. See, maybe that's what the next episode will be called. Black girl in the white house. So for those of y'all who remember, like uh, set aside your political views. Cause I know I get it. It's a, it's a, it's a, a shit show in general. Like, you know, the whole political system. But last year I was invited to the White House for the first time to watch the State of the Union and then to kind of like share like the financial components of the State of the Union that we should all be focused on. And so, you know, at first they put you like in this press room and I just thought, oh, we're going to be in this press room. I was excited. And then we actually went to the actual White House itself. I said, uh, uh, not me. Met the first lady just happened to walk by like, oh, hey, girl. I said, oh, hey, Miss Chu. I shook her hand or whatever, because, you know, and then they were like, we literally, I have a picture of me, <laughs> yo, it's crazy, on like the front porch of the White House, you know, like, well, not the front porch that we were on the front porch too, but you know that like the circular veranda thing that's on the second level? I got a picture of me just leaning. I got to post that picture again so I can gag the girls. Um, and it was just so surreal, Black girl in the White House. Um, yeah, it was just really surreal. And so, and actually the president pulled up. I didn't, you know, I thought we were just going to see him like from afar. No, he came up shaking hands. You know, I was like, wait a minute. So no matter your political leanings, you know, we're going to set that aside. And it is, I used to teach preschool in Newark, New Jersey. And your girl is going back to the White House and will potentially, you know, meet the president again, the first lady, even the vice president, whoever, you know, like, in the actual White House, I'm talking about like, you know, not adjacent house. Like literally, I was on that veranda. We were able to take pictures. It was surreal. And so it just is a testament to where your works can take you. That's why I said with the black, the brown boost, the brown break is being mindful of the words that you say, because either way, they're true. And I don't want to adhere to limiting beliefs about my ability, my business, my money, relationships, love, friendships, um, um, you know, my, my, my familial relationships. I don't want to adhere to any limiting beliefs about those things because those things become true because there's no reason why this girl, you know, preschool teacher, Tiffany, you know, should be invited back to the white house again. You know what I mean? And it's because I, I, you know, I try my best to show up fully with all that I believe that I'm deserving. And even still, I still struggle with what does that actually mean? Because I still have some limiting beliefs that I try my best to work through with therapy and just like, you know, self-work. Um, and so I just share all that to say that like, yeah, my boost is like, I'm going back to the White House invited. Like, here is your invitation here. You know, it, it, the, the State of the Union is actually on Thursday. So, you know, follow me on social because I'm going to, I like to do like a series of stories so you can kind of follow along with me going to the White House um, and all that I have to do to get ready. Um, and then, of course, afterwards, I want to share like what I heard at the State of the Union and what components, at least the financial and the, the jobs and the careers and even small business stuff that um, we should be looking forward to for the, for the rest of this year, you know, that were addressed in the State of the Union. So, in the State of the Union address. So. Yeah, just want to leave you with all of that. You know, a little positivity. Black girl in the White House. Black girl in the White House. Black girl, black girl, black girl in the White House. <laughs> you know I'm a mess. Don't tell me I was in here cutting up. Um, yeah, so, you know, follow along. Um, I'll be posting the Bajanista um, IG mostly, so. All right, that's the show for today. Hope it gave you a little boost, honey. Um, yeah. I want for you what I want for myself, which is the best. Okay. All right. Until Friday, we're going to do BAQA. If you have questions, slide into our IG DMs, the Brown Ambition, Pod Brown Ambition Podcast. We'll answer as many questions as possible. 
I'll see you on Friday. Bye.